sheets along the perimeter of the sleeping area so they could block out the sun. Cameron never allowed his men the luxury. They awoke when the sun rose and slept when it went down. Just as Cameron had figured it, was almost nine and still no one had emerged to do him any work. He figured this thing would go down one of two ways. The first was that they would riddle the bunkhouse with bullets while the men slept. He was hoping it wouldn't come to that. He spent the better part of the year teaching these men to carefully pick their targets. To have them simply hold down the building blindly was beneath them. He considered planting a bomb under the structure, but he had to balance that against his desire to keep things quiet. Not that he expected anyone to stumble upon them or come to the aid of the drug runners. He did, but he wanted this first engagement to be in as perfect as possible. He wanted it to last no more than 20 seconds, and he wanted it to be totally silent. That was the interesting thing about guns. For those who had never experienced combat, the loud report of a rifle did funny things to the body. Time would stop. Fear would grip the brain and the body will be stuck in a moment of limbo that was usually followed by panic. To those who were used to the noise, though the reaction to the gunfight was instantaneous. Find the source and return fight, and good soldiers couldn't do it within seconds. Karen wasn't going to give them the, that chance. He was going to draw them out. The plane would fly over. Once at nine, buzzing the strip, he was confident that would wake the men from their slumber and draw them outside. With or without the guns, it, it did not matter. Their attention would be direct or uh, scout. They would never notice the four men concealed at their right or the other three behind them. At ten minutes before the hour, Karen heard someone steering in the bunkhouse. A uh, moment later, a man appeared. He stumbled down the wood steps and relieved himself right there next to the building. When he was done, he walked over to the well and stuck his head under the faucet. After he doused most of his face and upper body with cold water, he stumbled over to the open-air warehouse.